The European Commission is a proof of this video. Federica Mogherini, High Representative of the European Union. The Italian lady who once proudly stood next to Yasser Arafat is suffering from cognitive dissonance. Federica Mogherini graduated on her dissertation on political Islam, which she completed while on an Erasmus program in France. It is again demonstrated that universities in Western Europe teach a rainbows and unicorn version of Islam, because doing otherwise would be politically incorrect. As Federica Mogherini in 2015, one year after she became high representative, stated that Islam holds a place in our Western societies. Islam belongs in Europe. It holds a place in Europe's history, in our culture, in our food and what matters most in Europe's present and future. I'm not afraid to say that political Islam should be part of the picture. Religion plays a role in politics, not always for good, not always for bad. Religion can be part of the process. What makes the difference is whether the process is democratic or not. So there you already have the first punchline of this video. If it comes to politics, migration, multiculturalism and Islam, universities teach politically correct nonsense. Anyway, today Mogherina is responsible for the EU vs Disinfo program, an initiative that aims to remove so-called disinformation from the internet. In this video I'd like to show you why this lady is suffering from cognitive dissonance, which is very typical for people on the left. Let's say I give you uh, one wish, <laughs> one magic bean. What do you do with it? Another 99. <laughs> you want one 100 magic enough. beans? Okay, well, what, what do you do one with the first one enough. then? How about that? Uh, I would probably say, and the war in Syria. Uh, it's a war that is going on for far too long. We're getting used to hundreds uh, of people dying every day, children, women. Federica here is supposed to be representing the people of Europe. But when she is asked what her wish is, she doesn't answer, I like the Islamic grooming of underage girls in the UK to stop. Or I like the rapes in Sweden to stop. Or I'd like to stand up for my fellow Italians who are suffering because of illegal migration. No, she answers, I'd like the Syrian war to end. Uh, I would probably say, and the war in Syria. She's more concerned about the people outside of Europe than about the people inside of Europe. Even though she's supposed to be representing the interests of the people inside of Europe. Isn't that a typical problem with people on the left nowadays? Caring about their own people more than about other people is racist. The last couple of Brussels forums, we've been talking about this uh, nationalist movement, right? And, and, and unfortunately, we are still talking about it from some perspectives. For others, they are glad to be uh, still talking about it. What did the election tell you about the movement? What we've seen in Italy is uh, a major uh, shift to uh, anti-system uh, messages and forces. What I see is two main political uh, elements coming up. One is the clear uh, victory of the Five Star Movement, which is a movement that has no political clear connotation. Mm -hmm. It's not center, right, left. It's, it's a movement. Uh, so we'll find out. Uh, am I diplomatic enough? <laughs> On the other side, the other element, uh, which well, is well, how about this? Is it strong? Is, do you see it ebbing? Do you see it? Where do you see it? But if I can, the other strong element we see coming up of these right. elections is the uh, shift in uh, the power uh, balance right. within the centre right. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the extreme right uh, with the Northern League uh, gaining power and the sort of traditional right with Berlusconi, if you call it traditional, I don't know, everything is relative, uh, coming down. Uh, and this is a major change in the Italian political landscape, a uh, change in, in, uh, in power forces, uh, relations within the right camp. As is very typical for these cosmopolitan, internationally oriented leftists, who are more concerned about the people outside of Europe than inside of Europe, they are totally detached from the situation on the ground. Anybody who is trying to explain what just happened in Italy earlier this month without mentioning the word migration or migrant or Islam 
at least once does not know what he or she is talking about. Federica has become so detached from the country that she was born that she doesn't even know what the average Italian person thinks and feels. And of course, if you don't know that, then you can't possibly be representing the average Italian person. And we all know that she isn't. Because the left doesn't care about the average European person. Anyway, let's go to the part where the collective cognitive dissonance that the left suffers from could be seen very clearly in Federica Mogherini. Uh, I think we have to keep in mind what I said before. Yes. Uh, the German Marshall Fund reminds us that mm -hmm. the smartest investment uh, the United States made over history probably was the investment on a strong Europe yeah. and uniting the transatlantic uh, bond. Uh, we have to continue investing in that strong partnership, which is a natural partnership, the most natural partnership we will ever have across the Atlantic. Okay, so Federica just said that she views the alliance between Europe and the US as a natural alliance. And the reason why she views this alliance as such, she clarifies later in the... Let's take a look. Uh, I want to finish by asking, in a, in a hopeful way, uh, and a way of solution and, 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 and steps moving forward, an action plan, practicality, uh, how you would explain why the transatlantic relationship and alliance and dynamic is important? And how would you describe that to a 20-something in Europe? To a 20-something in Europe, first you have to switch off the phone, stop the music, and, uh, and, and wave a little bit. Um, That's like me, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, or, or, or everybody in this room, for that matter. Uh, I think it's still commonality of values and interests. That's it. And I think 20 years old in people in, in Europe, as well as in the United States, uh, feel that we are the same. Our culture is the same, the music we listen to is the same, the movies we watch are the same, we believe in the same values, we want to more or less to build the same kind of life. Uh, it's a, it, that's why I say it's a natural partnership, right. because really it's difficult to find the differences. We have differences, right. but we also have differences inside Europe. We belong to the same, to the same world, somehow. Um, Politics might shift, uh, but the people uh, are, are on the same side. Aha! Uh -huh. Now this is very interesting. So Federica actually is aware of the importance of values and identity. Because the friendship between Europe and North America is based on something that we have in common. Which are Western values and a Western identity. Even though there are differences between the US and Europe, as well as within the US and within Europe, we still are all Westerners. That's correct. Federica here actually understands the importance of values and identity. Because as Europeans, our most natural allies are not the Muslims of the Middle East or the Muslims of North Africa, even though they are much nearer by than the Americans. No, our most natural friends are the North Americans, even though they're living all the way on the other side of the Atlantic. And this is because of values and identity. You would almost think that Federica here actually has an understanding of the very same concepts that the so-called far right is talking about. What's the problem then, you might wonder? Because if she understands the importance of values and identity, then why isn't she fully aware of the danger that Muslim migration and demographics represent to Europe? How can Federica understand the importance of values and identity, but then allow millions of Muslims to enter Europe? How can she understand the importance of values and identity, but then participate in blackmailing European nation-states to let in these Muslims? This doesn't make any sense. And this is where the cognitive dissonance that is so typical for people on the left can be seen in this lady who is high representative of foreign affairs of the European Union. Federica here is holding two opposing beliefs at the same time. 1. Values and identity are important because that is what binds us with these people called Americans who are living all the way on the other side of the Atlantic. Two, values and identity are not important 
because Islam has a place in Europe, it all doesn't matter, everyone is the same, and all these populists who don't want Muslim migration should uh, shut up, and I have no idea what just happened in my own country last week. These two beliefs are mutually exclusive, and holding two mutually exclusive beliefs at the same time is called cognitive dissonance. Federica, if you actually agree that values and identities are so important in binding people together, then what do you think will happen if Europe were no longer European? Do you think that an Islamic Europe would still view the United States as its most natural ally? What do you think will happen when 30% of Sweden will be Muslim? And what do you think will happen to your own country if mass migration were to continue? And if you agree that values and identity are important, as you've just said, then how can you even disagree with everything that these people you call populists are saying? If values and identity are so important, then why do you think Islam has a place in Europe? Because values and identity are not that important? And if that's the case, then why do you think the Americans are Europe's most natural ally? Which you've just said. The EU's High Representative of Foreign Affairs is suffering from cognitive dissonance. This is Paul from DebateLeft.com. Do not forget to click the big red button to subscribe. And if you like this type of content, please consider supporting my work. Have a good day everyone.